Okay. We'll see how well this goes. Oh, it doesn't even matter how well it goes. We'll just do it. <clears throat> Never get too close to your artwork. I used to work at a place uh, that did collectible guns and knives where uh, it was not uncommon to use a, a micrometer to look at our artwork. And the only reason we had a micrometer around to look at artwork was the guy had been, uh, before he got into gold plating collectible guns and knives, he'd been important to uh, Texas Instruments as a as a guy that you know did circuit boards so we had that background of that sort of plating and that sort of uh, thing and so this micrometer came with him and uh, you just don't want to go down to the cellular level on a piece of line artwork uh, that's why people work large and that uh, what you can't do as an artist gets forgiven a little bit when you uh, when you make it uh, bigger and go to smaller. Like here, I'm I'm in close enough to where I kind of wish I wasn't. But uh, with my line artwork, I've got to I've got to endure it. Always got to undo. I'm listening in the background, and I've already checked it. You can't really hear it, which is good. Uh, the old uh, girl hunters with uh, where Spillane actually cast himself as uh, Mike Hammer, and I've got a uh, I've got a weird kind of affection for the stupid movie. It's got Shirley Eaton in it. She's gorgeous in it, and. Uh, as <laughs> she's, you know, spoiler alert, she dies at the end of it when uh, uh, Spillane very blasele stuffs the top of the shotgun he knows she'll be shooting his, shooting him with later, stuffs both barrels, and she blows her own head off with it. So there, now you don't have to watch the girl hunters. It's really annoying because it's one of those very competently photograph things that uh, on the uh, Amazon Prime list now, that's where I'm watching it, it's pan and scan. So that's the version we got. It's probably public domain. It's the reason this is the version we've got. So uh, I've noticed that <clears throat> they have some beyond oddities on Amazon Prime. They have something I saw called Thugs and Dinosaurs that I started up and I've got to watch it just to see just how awful it is. It, it was no doubt probably shot on an iPhone or something and it's just kids working around a, a couple of I guess the sets that they can get to in their neighborhood. One of them's dressed all purpley and everything like a pimp with a giant hat and I haven't seen how they plan on working dinosaurs into it. I think I've, I scanned and, and scrubbed all of it. It's just, you know, what you do if you... But what was fascinating to me, I, and, and I would be very interested in, is how does it end up on Amazon Prime? I can see how it gets made. I mean, uh, people make throwaway crap all the time, but it, but it stays in someone's... Uh, stays on someone's hard drive or gets on YouTube, well, that's the deal. I mean, is that what Amazon's is saying here? Hey, look, we're, we're the new YouTube. I don't know. It made me think, well, hell, I can... Is that what they're trying to do? Is, is, is uh, pointing out to the world at large, hey, you can do this. I don't know, because that's, that's almost anybody's reaction to seeing this movie. I can do that. And it's weird. The moment you see something <laughs> that you know you can do, you uh, you say, "Well, golly, I need to do that." Like you uh, think, 
uh, and well, that's the other thing you'd like to know about it. Did did uh, thugs and dinosaurs make any money? I doubt it. I, I imagine there's some sort of uh, thing that that falls into that the acquisition didn't require money would be my bet. Otherwise, someone would have to answer. How much did we pay for this? I guess there's movies opening this weekend. The whole controversy about Captain Marvel just based on what someone that stars in a movie does on social media. I don't get. I honestly, to God, don't get it. The uh, notion that someone might mount a uh, a uh, a boycott based on uh, comic book readers <laughs> that animal called comic book readers no there aren't any that's the whole point of uh, San Diego Comic Con not being a, a, an animal that's anything like got to do with comic books anymore it's, uh, it's all pop culture and the demographic well, here comes Shirley Eaton's part, I think. Yeah, here we go, wasting. Gotta wait till he's done. I oh yeah. Oh yeah. Bikinis back in the fifties were still about as naked as you got. Yep, yep, yep. And anyway, what was my thing? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, just boycotts based on people that are <laughs> comic book readers. It's just not what what though that tells you though is that everybody that is doing well with this niche of being a comic book reader or are going after the market of comic book reader and still making you know you know still having a viable something or other to do with the living. That's that's just kind of just shows you that any niche can be a successful niche. Let me check something out. Yeah, that's what I thought. Verticals. Hit the shift key. There we go. That helps. <laughs> Shirley Eaton, the golden girl from... Goldfinger. Okay. I think they may be dubbing her. Oops. No, they're letting her have an English accent. She's the killer! Spoiler alert. Hell, I don't hit dames. This is a thing that uh, I was given reference for it, which is uh, which is helpful. You you put it into I, I turn all the reference into a PDF and get it to where I can scroll it up and look at it. Right now, my main reference I'm I'm just using a, a pin up right on my cork board right now to look at all the little details I want to refresh my memory about with. Uh, couple characters and that's the point you don't want to be slavish with reference you want to you want to say okay yeah I know what that looks like and then tear into it draw you're going to have to translate it into 2d anyway it's going to have to be don't don't uh, act like you uh, are bound by 
everything you see in your reference. Let me check something real quick. Yeah, good, good, good. So I can rotate and have that be the new vertical. That'd be good. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very good. We'll do some more of that. Instead of actual drawing, we'll <laughs> make some vertical lines. Don't want to get too... Uh, I don't want this to look too much like I got the rulers out on it. Even though, I mean, the eye rebels when it sees too many of my uh, floppy lines. I don't want to be uh, too precious about the straights either, though. This is going to be a uh, background that features uh, old newspapers, and I might lay in roughly where those outlines will go for the newspapers but then I'm going to like Greek those newspapers in uh, Photoshop you know bring bring some actual newspapers down and, and get vintage newspapers too you know so that the because uh, layouts have changed over the years and uh, get some of those the way a newspaper used to look and uh, Greek them out and use that for a little paste up. I may even, uh, beyond Greeking, I may turn them into uh, paths and uh, really simplify them. Exposition: Some guy that can barely act wandered onto the scene and starts talking about alarms going off. The uh, storytelling is such a thing when you see it done really well. And I'm, I, <laughs> I'm always going to get someone guffawing when they hear me talking about storytelling and doing it well. Is that uh, you know you uh, you would like to tell people what they need to know you think they need to know about your story and uh, like I just re-refreshed myself on this stant talk where he first he talks about uh, stories that we like all being jokes of some sort or other where you uh, well, you got to know the ending and you got to know how that pays off I think that is a to me 90% of everything that involves a story. Now this one doesn't uh, particularly. It's a three-page little strip. But it, it, it ends up with a dramatic scene on it that I guess could uh, be called my, my vision of what almost all stories that we like are, which is a showdown. Uh, the, the writer that wrote uh, Alien, Dan O'Bannon, he broke it down as saying my system is that the all my scenes all my shots are a series of fights and I was so thrilled with that because I can't tell you the synchronicity of all that how how total it was because I had just to my mind I said I'm never going to be able to outline this unless I simplify it my own little project I had going and I, I said okay I'm gonna have every little piece of this and just call it a fight that was going to simplify it because I, I had the uh, that truism in my mind that conflict is about the only thing we're interested in so I, I boiled it down further and I said well then everything in my little story is going to be what could be construed a fight even if it's you know 
someone walking in and having an appointment with someone, there's someone that thinks, well, this, this appointment was a bad idea or whatever. You know, you're going to have someone that's uh, being, uh, you know, hard-headed or something in it or, or being too cute by half or something like that. And so that's how I would justify calling everything a fight. And sure enough, a guy is as well thought of as Dan O'Bannon when I read his book on sc screenplays. There it was. Boy, I was, I was really about as tickled on that as anything has made me. You know, because you like being... <laughs> you like feeling like you're smart. It's like some of this stuff it's it's like it's lab I mean who who better to play Mike Hammer than old uh, Spillane but <laughs> you know he's, he's he looks tough you know he looks like he came from what he came from but he's not you know he's not much of an actor and I guess Hammer didn't really require you know, great acting chops, but wouldn't have hurt. It never hurts. <laughs> like I say, I've got it on for background noise. This is my version of what oh, uh, Doug Tenaple does. He he gets people in his hangout chats and talks to them at the same time. I'd find that very distracting. And I'm like, I don't have a, I'm not paying any sort of attention to a, a scroll over anything that the two people that are might just happen to be watching this I'm just dabbing away and I'm gonna stop when I stop by the way the uh, I mean anybody interested that might be listening to this or looks at it in the archive version what I'm doing here uh, with tool wise I've got one tool going this was a, a brush by uh, some presets by Kyle. Kyle's brushes. Uh, Kyle, good. Uh, anyway, he's on. He's on Gumroad. He's pretty famous. In fact, I think he got so famous. I think Photoshop hired him or something like that. He's a. Uh, he does a really good product, and I, I've got one brush I'll be using for this entire thing called. What is it called? It's called. I may have renamed it. Uh, clean as a whistle. This is called clean as a whistle. It's just a really good. I started. I drew this thing right here in uh, the the little cabinet or whatever back here, little dress chest of drawers. I drew that initially in uh, Manga Studio, my old copy of Manga Studio, and. <laughs> It was okay working with it that way, but I, I realized, well, you know what? This is exactly the experience I'd have with this brush I like so much. In um, so let's go ahead and put us a little uh, white layer back there that we can turn on if I feel like it. There we go. That's what I'm getting. A little cleanup. Now the the other thing I could come along and do is select all that and turn it into a path and then fill it and get it that much cleaner as well but uh, we'll wait and see i may i may go with this we don't want anything aliasing too bad but i i think i'm at 300 dpi this is for a little local publication called Oki comics it's about uh you know it's about being in the dust bowl and the okies that hadn't gone west yet a lot of okies didn't go west A lot of Okies didn't go west. I better lock that before I do something to it. Locking the blue layer. I've got one down on the lower level where I did draw over it a little bit. Now this is where, you know, I'm trying to be smart about how I do this. I'm just going to 
take advantage of the fact that since I'm going from point to point and I want a curve, all I'm doing is just going to push a straight that averages into a curve by the time it's done going around the bend. That's what happens when you uh, <laughs> the old the old uh, comic book art you, you used to have to be involved with. You'd get on something where you'd want to draw a curve. And you were faced with, I think it was like 45 degrees you could draw and like 15 and then vertical or horizontal. And that was, that was what you were faced with. And of course you had to average, you had to alias, uh, you know, to, to get any sort of illusion of a, of a curve. And so me uh, pushing what are, what are easy to draw, straights from point to point, <clears throat> yeah. Adding a little curve to it, maybe, but, you know, it's under control in terms of what I can pull as a line. Now, I'm never one of these guys that draws from the shoulder, either. I've got, I've got, uh, I've got the tool between my chopstick fingers, and that's what I'm doing. I, and uh, it, that's, a, that's a big, it's a big weakness, because uh, points about that sort of a uh, big, Big stroke, well, they're, they're valid points. Uh, you uh, should be able to get a big stroke out of your out of your uh, drawing ability, but I never developed one, and it would uh, I would I'd be doing really good. I'd even catch guys' eyes uh, that uh, were really good at drawing, and, and were in fact the instructors. I I kind of caught a uh, oh, what's his name? He's got three letters in his last name. Brilliant, brilliant illustrator. And he was our, our quick sketch guy in in the California Institute of Arts. I'll think of his name eventually if I don't try too hard. Uh, you, you'd know him. He did the uh, did some great paperback covers for uh, Stephen King's books. What is his name? Anyway, my my stuff. You know, he he'd come over and talk to me like, a, "Hey, I get it. You know what you're doing." But the deal was, I. If any time it turned into a long study where I had to fill up the entire newsprint page, I'm glad he never saw those. <laughs> because there you have to do the uh, the big stroke where you have to really uh, figure out what you're doing with a, with a, and get a good look. And I never did. My mine were were always, and you uh, what what you develop when you don't have that talent is your work uh, will stay PC. You don't want that, even though obviously you know it's like any sort of disability. <laughs> I, I'm colorblind. What the hell am I doing being an artist? But it's a uh, it's a uh, it's just one of those things where you. Say, well, I can do this and I can do that. And I can, you know, I, uh, the uh, main thing I guess I've developed over the years is I can sit down and uh, do a rough and then develop it up from that. I can start to see, I have, a, I have an anthology book called Sticky Doodle where I have a lot of my uh, past work in it, a little anthology of stuff. And as I say in the introduction, I call it sticky doodle because they are doodles. They aren't. They never turn into great studies. But they are what stuck as I as I examined what I was up to, and that's what all I do. That's I do a rough, and then I draw a few things that stick, and some of it looks better than other. The biggest revelation I've had lately is reading the book Framed Ink by, uh, oh, he's famous. He's, he's, uh, he's a genius, too. Well, he's not a genius. He's, he's just a very good artist. And that is worth, it took me one evening to sit down and actually read it. And like so many art books, like I've got a James Gurney color book in there, whatever good that will do me, uh, that I haven't read cover to cover because there's more to read in it. The framed ink, 
there's not that much to read in it. I, I spent one evening, read every square inch of it, instead of leaving it laying about to uh, allegedly, you know, like, you know, look at and look at what a good artist someone else is and assume I was going to get an osmosis value out of that. That don't work. You've got to either copy somebody or uh, get in and dig on what this guy's trying to tell you. And, uh, and that read, <laughs> part of the big part of the uh, way this book was structured, designed, was almost every drawing that a guy wouldn't be looking at if he was just soaking up the, the beauty of the big drawings was that every one of those was accompanied by a little thumbnail of the big shapes. And that was the main thrust of what he was trying to tell you to do. Always uh, let that be your guiding principle. So on this, I got very abstract and painted and drew, and I probably should go back to going ahead and doing some drawing here with the, uh, the uh, lasso tool or my own little action for uh, the pen tool, which is just basically filling, and, uh, and, and, and grabbing those big areas of black and doing big shapes. And that, that puts you on the right path. Get that first. I've got my brush on clear. That's my favorite way to erase. I wish I had a hot key for that. But uh, as far as I know, it won't record when you go up to the uh, to the mode on your brush for uh, for your actions. I really wish it would. Boy, I'd have I'd go back and forth from normal to clear all the time on my eraser. That's the way I'd rather have my eraser set up. Because, you know, why wouldn't you? That's that's what you want to erase. Is the line you just made, why not have the uh, tool you just used be the eraser? So, hear me, Photoshop. Give me an action. Or a hotkey. This uh, is kind of funny, the reference photo for this. I'm using uh, this one shot. It's, it's got three principles in this story of the dad, the mom, and the little girl. So I've got mom and the little girl on this porch that seems very, very familiar to me. I've got relatives from Arkansas, and this looks, you know, very much a period that I was stepping into from living in the 50s. This, this may date to the 1920s, but I, I doubt it. It's probably a little more time forward than that. It might be the writer probably trying to find good ref. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so the guy, there's a boy in the background. So what I'm going to do, and what I have done already, is uh, he's down here. I've aged the boy. I've stayed with the same floppy hair, because that would age forward. Elongated his face. He's still going to be the same kid. He's going to have the same sort of eyes that, uh, you know, he's got a type of eye. So she's cleaning her hands up here. I may be stopping on this and getting out. The sun finally came out. I tell you what, I'm a, I'm very susceptible to cabin fever. After a few days, a few gray days, I'm gonna get out for my walk here shortly. Yep, 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 yep. No, it's good to actually do something. Get back on this later. I guess I'll, I guess I'll stream all of it. 
and you can see my setup. It's it's going to be real simple. I've got all. F Oops. Wait a second. What did I just do? Oh, I got you. There. See, I've got it all set up in layers to where I can real simple. And uh, it's not set up though with uh, in the original Photoshop file where I've got the. Uh, text and all that this is going to I'll, I'll I'll cut and paste this and add it and this will have all that newspaper stuff as well Oops. Blubbed out like a bad marker. It's funny. If you kill anybody, Mike. You got to wonder about, you know, though, cops, you'd think they'd uh, have disdain for this kind of stuff. <laughs> they, they, they still dig all, all the nonsense cop stuff. They, uh, you know, they're disdainful of what they don't get right. But, the, but they love probably half of them probably the reason they are cops all the all the nonsense uh, storytelling that goes on with stuff about cops speaking of which we'll have a classic cinema podcast based on one of my picks this Friday I'll put a link to it somewhere I'll start doing that in my YouTube channel here of uh Posting to uh, our podcast. And it will be Freebie and the Bean, which is supposedly a seminal cop buddy movie. As Alan, uh, Alan Arkin, don't get that wrong. Don't want to say Alda. It's MASH. And, uh, and James Kahn. And I'll make this comment when we uh, when we first start watching it. But I remember the only thing I've ever seen is a trailer. I remember it's got one spectacular car crash that almost seems like a cartoon. It's directed by the guy that did the Stunt Man, which of course has got that great uh, acting performance by a guy that I don't know didn't get to do enough. I think I think guy's career when you play Charlie Manson and you do it. <laughs> a very memorable way it might limit you later what's his name oh, he's in life force and I love his uh, his what you could call his style but anyway he's he's in stunt man and I, and I couldn't tell you the director's name so it's uh it's uh, gonna be interesting because I have actually managed not to see Freebie and the Bean all these years and I think it's because you know I think it's kind of semi-obscure I think it's kind of hard to get a hold of I don't think it played a lot on TV but my first impression of it was man these guys don't understand if they're trying to make me laugh they don't understand physical humor I'm, I'm I feel like I'm watching a fight and I don't know if I if I'll, I'll feel that way when I watch it again. You know, I just was basing it on seeing the trailer. Maybe I was more sensitive back then. <laughs> but 
But that that of course that would go to being the uh, uh, you know the beginnings of something. You know, you might experiment with like, okay, you guys hate each other, and maybe that gets dialed back later when it becomes Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte. I don't know. So we'll see. Well, let's see what that looks like when I turn off the blue and turn on the white. A little messy. It's all right. I'll clean it up. She needs a little more. Yeah, there's information there that's missing that needs to be there. And I'll get to it. Right now, I'm going to quit and go walk after I save. Always save. Just hit save. That didn't cost me anything. Same gotta kill what you call, kill sort of a There we go.